<gülüyor> Herkese selamlar. Şimdi önce bir şunu bir yapıştırayım. Evet arkadaşlar. Ee, tekrar ben. Bugün e, çok önemli bir misafirim var. Hırvatistan'dan. E, görev köpekleri eğitmeni kendisi. Chris Nikolic. E, onunla e, arama kurtarma, kadavra ve adli tıp köpekleri üzerine bir söyleşi yapacağız. Yalnız sizlerden şöyle bir ricam var. E, aynı zamanda Amerika'dan da bir arkadaşım e, bu konuşmaları İngilizce yapmaya çalıştığım benim bir yetersiz İngilizcem konuşmaları Serkan kardeşim e, simultane olarak aşağıya ter, yazacak tercüme edecek dolayısıyla sorularımızı işte bu hani kalpler el sallama falan hani bunları en sona bırakalım e, müsaadenizle e, Serkan kardeşim için Serkan da geldi merhaba Serkan e, mümkün olduğunca hem benim yetersiz İngilizceme hem de sizlerin anlaması için Chris'in anlattıklarına e, destek olacak dolayısıyla Sizlerden böyle bir ricam var. Yani şu sıra yani soru cevap kısmına kadar lütfen herhangi bir yorum ya da emoji deniyor galiba atmayalım. Hello. Hi, Gautam. How are you, my brother? Uh, quite okay today. Um, my face is kind of burned out right now. Yeah. Light. Just a second. <laughs> You're looking like an alien. No, no, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a second. Uh, I don't know why this is happening, but uh, maybe like this. Some lightning, something. Uh, we'll try. Ah, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. Okay. Let me uh, give some information to the Turkish people, and then I'm going to turn you. Okay. Ee, arkadaşlar selamlar. Ee, ekranda da gördüğünüz gibi arkadaşım Chris, meslektaşım. Kendisi Hırvatistan'dan. Ee, uzun yıllardır kendisiyle bir dostluğumuz var. Ee, bugün kendisinden görev köpekleri, özellikle arama kurtarma, e, kadavra köpekleri ve adli tıp köpekleri konusunda çalışma yapacağız. Sizlerden ricam e, lütfen e, soru cevap kısmına kadar e, yorum yazmayın, emoji göndermeyin. And Chris, this Tarkan, he is one of my brothers from United States. You okay? Uh, he, will, he will translate on time. Uh, let me tell the Turkish people again. Uh, Amerika uh, Birleşmiş Milletler'de uh, güvenlik yöneticisi olarak görev yapan arkadaşım Serkan da uh, bize uh, tercüme, uh, canlı tercüme ederek, yani yazılı olarak tercüme ederek destek olacak arkadaşlar. Evet, şimdi Chris'le başlayalım. Okay, Chris, now we, we are turning in English. I'm sorry about my bad English, uh, first of all. <laughs> so, could you please tell about you a little? <clears throat> well, yeah. Um, well, my name is Chris Nikolic. I'm uh, living in Croatia. I'm Croatian. Um, I'm former military. Um, after that, I went out of the military. Uh, I was involved in the conflict in, uh, you know, the conflict in Balkans in 1990s. Uh, yeah. After that, I came back. I had to, did have some. I did have some problems with myself, so I started to work with the dogs just as a therapy, you know. And from that on, I actually developed the love for the working with the dogs. And it was in '95 I actually started to working with the dogs. In the beginning, it was just you know the ordinary stuff, uh, basic stuff, and hunting dogs and stuff. Sorry. So uh, after your uh, military job and the, the conflict in the Balkans, I think uh, the dogs help to rehabilitate you. You know, at Absolutely. the beginning, you, you told me something about it because it's important. Yeah, it's really quite simple. First of all, you give yourself a meaning of life. You have some, yeah. something to take care of. And that, that uh, person or the dog or the animal will give you back that love um and that per that, that person actually you're taking care of somebody you have a responsibility for somebody uh because that dog cannot uh, i mean it can live without you but you know you have yeah. to, something to do on the other hand what actually gave me the benefit of being relaxed is me walking with the dog in the night in the woods you know feeling more relaxed as a military person yourself you know how what i mean yeah it, yeah I, it's I different understand. Yeah, it's a different. So yes, it was a really, really good thing, and I'm really sorry that I don't see that uh, governments in uh, different countries 
do not imply that in their um, rehabilitation programs for the veterans, PTSD guys and stuff. It would be, it would be really good. Oh, let me explain that, that important point to the followers. Arkadaşlar, e, Chris eski bir e, asker, Serkan'ın da çevirdiği gibi. Ama e, önemli bir e, tespiti var. Diyor ki dünyada e, problem yaşayan askeri e, personelle ilgili rehabilitasyonda köpekler çok az kullanılıyor. Ama e, biz bunu kullandık ve beni hayata döndürmede çok büyük faydası oldu diyor. E, Serkan sen de teyit ediyorsan zaten yazıyorsun. Teşekkür ederim. Okay, keep going. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Then after that, <coughs> as a civilian, uh, I wanted to continue working with something because you know how it goes. We always uh, have a problem with lack of uh, adrenaline and stuff. <laughs> so I joined <laughs> Croatian Mountain Rescue Service. Uh, it was Croatian the... Mountain Rescue Service. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll explain something about it. The Croatian Mountain Rescue Service is actually an association. It's a volunteer association. Um, Uh, but, it's a not gover government uh, company. It's a uh, NGO. It's an NGO, but they, they receive the money from the government because of the okay. work they do. The work they do is actually by law. That there is a law about the Croatian Mountain Rescue Service okay. uh, approved by the government of Croatia in which the uh, Croatian Mountain Rescue Service is responsible for the all search and rescue missions in Croatia. Only All the search and, search and rescue missions. Yes, that's right. Every okay. search and rescue, rescue missions is uh, author, uh, authorized by police. And okay. It, but on the field, outside, the coordination between the services is done by the Croatian Mountain Rescue Service. And Croatian Mountain Rescue Service has a more uh, resources uh, for search and rescue, for example. And I was involved in it. And after some time, I became an instructor for the search management. I'll explain oh. this. Uh, yeah. And I started to work with the dogs as well. And during that time, I was, I don't know, uh, sort of more than 15 years, I was involved in the mountain rescue service, uh, which in, in that, that time, I was involved in more of 800 missions. Uh, sometimes I was the mission leader, sometimes a team leader, sometimes a canine um, Uh, handler depending. Canine team leader or, yeah yeah and so this is the thing uh, because we have lots of in Croatia we have lots of tourists and we have lots of um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they love flip-flops and they love to go up in the mountain on the flip-flops so we have yeah. to take care of them on the other hand it's not only in the summertime but during the year we have lots of old elderly people missing you know, uh, with the dementia problem and everything. Yeah. So, um, Croatian Mountain Rescue Service is in charge of this finding. So, I was in, uh, involved in all those things for a long, long time. Then, what really, really uh, specific about it is we implement the search um, management with together with the search teams, canine search teams. The canine search team was implemented by Andrea Pinta, my wife. She's uh, uh -huh. she was the lead chief instructor in that time in, in uh, Croatia in Mountain Rescue Service, and I was a part of the program of the who actually implemented search management into Mountain Rescue Service. Search and then, then, and this time you steal the girl. I understand you steal the Andrea as a yeah, wife. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the thing. Uh, in the search management, uh, what you do is, one time I think you told me uh, one quote and said, it goes like, uh, search mission or the mission without planning. No, uh, planning without mission is a daydream. Uh, let, yeah, mission let, let without me, planning is a nightmare. And uh, let me tell you, uh, action, uh, planning without action, without action is a daydream. Uh, action without planning is a nightmare. That's right. Yeah. So that was a thing I was thinking about. And when we start doing this stuff, um, uh, we realized that we raised the um, success rate of the missions up to 75%. Um, and that was a big, big deal because you can imagine that 
if you have 100 missions, you complete successfully uh, 75 of them. So it's a big deal. Yeah, good yeah. job. It's a good job. Yes. On the other hand, what we notice as well is the most of the search missions we did end up with finding the body, not just the uh, missing person. So we start to work on the cadaver, uh, dual dogs. That means alive and dead, but on the ground. In that time, on the ground. Yeah. On the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So in that time, we didn't know much about it. And we start to, especially Andrea, well, actually, she started to think how to do so, how to manage some things. And after some times, actually, she put down the license one, two for the dogs. Uh, license two means that the dog was supposed as a team. I'm, I'm, when I'm talking dog, I mean canine team. That's a handler yeah. and dog together. Um, they are actually uh, have to, for the license two. They have to cover I don't know uh, 30 hectares or something like that, to, uh, or 10 hectares within three hours, depending on the soil and blah blah blah. And that was good. And that time suddenly the police started to call us for the criminal cases because they said, okay. We have cadaver dogs, let's help us with this. And then we realize it's not the same. So, uh, yeah. uh, because they might help, but it's not the same. Uh, search and rescue dog, cadaver dogs are too fast for the criminal cases. And I see. then Andrea and I, we started to work on it and realized that we just scratched the surface. And it was just the beginning of this big journey <laughs> we have. Um, and I think we met uh, on the beginning of this journey, right? Yes, so in the beginning, in 2020, yeah. 2012, 2012, I think. 12, yeah, 12, yeah. Uh, I think 12, or, or 14. No, uh, on the 12, we contact, and the 13, in the, uh, I came the correction. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And <clears throat> so in that time, uh, in uh, actually, so in 2011, we make this association, it's called the uh, Croatian Association for the Special Purpose Dogs. And um, we started to do some things and we decided to exchange knowledge with the people around the world because we didn't know much, you know, it was, we were actually uh, learning as we go, you know, it's, there's no literature, there's no nothing, you know, nobody talks about it. Right, right, and right. You don't have a time to go to the police officer and say, yeah, could you tell me something about the criminal case <laughs> you're working on? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll probably say, yeah, of course, let's have a beer. Um, anyway, um, so we decided to do this Croatian work, cadaver workshop. You were invited. That's the first time yeah. we met. And as you remember, we get together. It was people from Poland, from uh, Spain, from all the Balkan regions. Slovenia. Slovenia, Slovenia yeah. From all the other around. Because our idea was, let's exchange knowledge. We have a problem. Yeah. Let's exchange knowledge. Let's, uh, we'll, uh, we'll tell you what we know. Please tell us what you know. So as yeah. you were there, so you know. And after that, we collect some knowledge. And after that, we start to work a lot um, on the real cases. Now, in that time, I quit my job. I was the IT manager in uh, one uh, agency, um, advertising agency. I quit my job and I started to work on this, you know, full time. And from that day on to here, we worked all around the world. We worked with the uh, Bundeskriminalamt, which is, for the viewers, it's a uh, German FBI. German FBI. Yes. Uh, worked for the German police, Italian police, uh, Garda di Finanza in Italia. We worked yeah. for the Balkan region countries. We worked with you in Turkey. We worked yeah. in Africa, in some other Middle East countries. So uh, we traveled the world and we worked on different cases. And now I can say that I know something about the cadaver uh, <laughs> problem. Uh, and from that, we developed from that on. And right now we are working on different cases. But what is really important that I have to say uh, for all of you guys there who are working with the detection dogs or any kind of detection, this is completely different. This is... Exactly. Exactly. This is the mix between uh, mind detection and um, illness detection. You know what you have in the hospitals and everything. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, the way of work is mind detection. So it's a long leash, short leash, or free search or something like that. Nose is down. Because we are searching 
body body in the ground and in the ground in the ground yeah. and the so let me let uh, let me explain some important point to the turkish people ee, şimdi arkadaşlar e, Chris'in bu teknik konusunu özellikle çevirmek istedim. Serkan da sağ olsun e, alttan veriyor. Teknik olduğu için ben de destek olmaya çalıştım. Serkan da yazdığı gibi e, kadavra köpekleri mayın ve e, diğer branşların biraz miksi gibi. Yani e, mayın köpeklerindeki gibi mümkün olduğunca burnu yerde e, çok mikro detection şeklinde ilerlemesi lazım. Yani standart dedektör köpekler. E, bizim bu e, Bomba, mayın köpek, çok özür dilerim, bomba narkotik köpekleri gibi değil diyor. Serkan da söylediği gibi kriminal davalarda vücutlar, yani daha doğrusu vücut parçaları ya da kadavralar toprağın altında aranmaya başlıyor. Bu önemli bir nokta. Okay, keep going. Yeah, and um, from that day on, it's, as I said, it's a different uh, because it's, um, well, The, the cadaver scent uh, is actually biological stuff. It's on the other side. The, for example, the the, the narcotics and explosives are artificial side uh, scents. Yeah, yeah. And they don't mix. That they mix with a, a surrounding, but not as much as a biological uh, um, stuff like cadaver, human cadaver. Yeah. And in this, uh, the, right now, I have to emphasize something, which is really important. Cadaver scent of the uh, animal cadaver and the scent of the human cadaver are not the same. It's approved right. by scientists. It's fact. And there's no way you can work on an animal cadaver and go searching for the human cadaver. Yes, no. people, are, people that, that didn't, did that. They done it. But um, what if you are searching, for example, in, uh, I don't know, uh in a trash or in a place where there's a lots of animal because for example if you're working some people say are we going to work on uh, pigs which is okay um but what you're going to do if you have a country like mine where eating pigs is something normal <laughs> and you have uh, leftovers in the trash you have leftovers here you have that animal here and here So, are your dog gonna find that animal, or your dog is gonna looking for the grave? So that's the big difference, and that's why I have to emphasize. And my dogs do not search for the uh, dead animals. We tested it, we proved it. That's it. Me too. <laughs> and it doesn't work. Doesn't work. That's right. So that's the first thing. Secondly, what is really important, this is the teamwork, searching for the grave is actually searching for the evidence. Um, you collect evidence like the inspectors do, put them together and present to the investigator. That investigator can be archaeological uh, person, that person can be military or police. Or criminal police. Or... Criminal, whatever. But my, my work is to collect evidence with our dogs. To do so, we use lots of technology because I'm IT guy and I like this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So with the help, that's why in my team, it's not only the handlers. Usually, we have a two uh, or three handlers in my team. And we have one lady. She's a PhD uh, from University of Zagreb. Um, she's a, a PhD in ecology, Vedrana Glavash. Maybe she's what? Uh, right? Hi, Vedrana. Yeah. Hi. Um, She's in charge of collecting data and analyzing data. Because when you work in searching for the grave, you have to think about the soil, about the um, a, geological, a, geological characteristics of the soil, of rain, of this and that. Uh, if you're looking for the dead body, was it uh, premeditated? So people planned to kill somebody, put him in the ground. Uh, was it, you know, just like that? Was it dumped? And lots and lots of things. And it's not like in, when you're working with the dog, it's not like the dog comes in, sits down, alert, and you say, that's it. That's here. It's not like yeah, that. Yeah. Because it's more complex than that. And from that point on, when we searched the criminal cases, one day, uh, my wife, Andrea, uh, received a phone call. Uh, the, 
The phone call went like this. Um, hi, my name is Vedran Aglavas. I'm PhD in Zadar Archaeology. My, our friend is a diver, knows all of us because we dive together, a scuba dive. I said that you are uh, like to work with the dogs and searching on the graves. And Andrea said, yes. Um, could you be so kind and take your dogs and come back to my archaeological site? I would like to, uh, you to check something. And In the archaeological site? Yes. You mean three, four, five thousand year old graves? Yes. Whoa. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. And... Um, and actually, that uh, what I heard on telephone call was, uh, okay, no problem, I'll call you later. And she put down phone and said, Chris, listen, we are going tomorrow to the seaside. And I said, uh, okay, th th that's cool. We are taking <laughs> all of the dogs and we have to check some um, burial site. And I was like, seaside? <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> burial site? Right. And she, so Andrea said, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, a beautiful young lady called me and she said that she would like, uh, like us to check the burial sites. And I said, okay, well, about burial sites? I thought maybe it's a, some kind of, you know, graveyard. Isn't it? Somebody I, killed somebody. And... Yeah, it's an archaeological <laughs> site. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and she said, well, let's, let's see how it's done. Let's see if the dog can, uh, at, at least can they do it? You know, maybe they can, maybe they can. Anyway, went there, uh, met with Vedrana, and we first tried on the already opened graves where the digging was. Uh, okay. So the, day, the dogs did good. They alerted actually on the, on the grave. And while we were talking in that situation, we, we, you know, having cigarettes talking, one of the dogs went on the side and alerted in the bush. And we were like, um, uh, <laughs> um, I think there's a grave there. Uh, <laughs> and so I said, okay, well, <coughs> anyway, a few months later, they, she got the permission to excavate there and actually they find the grave there. They, then we start to work some more and we find some more graves and we put everything on the paper, all the data, all the informations. And from that, Vedrana and uh, uh, Andrea actually made uh, this science article, which is uh, online you, you can search for it yeah that, i read it uh, that was great yeah and that was really important because we proved that the dogs can um actually find the graves uh, this situation it was 2700 years old grave it's uh Whoa. they say um it's proven uh, because they made the uh, analyze of the bones and stuff like that and from that day on we actually started to work with archaeologists in europe and uh, before this corona virus stuff, I was actually working in Germany on one case before, yeah. before I came back. So that's, that's in short what we do and how we did it. That, that was a journey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm proud of you uh, to, to be a small part of this journey. And uh, that was uh, funny times and very good times for me and to meet with you. So uh, I have uh, some questions okay. uh, in, in some dots or, and I get some notes, uh, some questions. Okay. So uh, I'm going to back again the, the mountain rescue, search and rescue service. Types. Okay. So uh, there's a lot lost people uh, as a tourist or as a local people uh, and or drunk people. Uh, uh, and you, uh, you're doing with the dogs area search, right? That's right. Okay, in that time, I have a question for you as an uh, experienced guy. What do you think about uh, that time uh, uh, in these cases, using the tracking dogs and the men training dogs? Well, uh, first of all, depends. I think, first of all, uh, we had one discussion, you and I arguing yeah. about it a few times. And my opinion, I, I did the men trailing and I did tracking. My opinion is that the... Truth is in the middle. When we are talking about the trekking and the men trailing, I think as a tool, if the dogs well done, made really good, and you know what I mean, yeah, it can be really good tool to uh, address the search on the right uh, angle, on the right direction, spot. right direction. Absolutely. Uh, and I think the trekking or the men trailing dogs can be used really good. And 
I think it's a wise thing to do. But, as I said, uh, the main po point is um, training with the dogs and the teams. Okay? Not only them, but there's a police there as well. There are firefighters there as well. In Turkey, I know it's Afat is there. So, yeah. um, you know, you have to coordinate all of them so they know how the man trailing or the trailing dog is working. But in my opinion, the ideal uh, team for go out and search is two, I'm sorry, two um, teams of the area search dog, one main trailing dog, one search manager, and when one paramedics. That's a very important point you, you, that you tell. So uh, let me explain it in Turkish to people because many rescuers following us too. Arkadaşlar, e, Chris'in e, dağ arama kurtarma tecrübesinden e, biraz bahsetti siz de biliyorsunuz. E, benim için e, ve Serkan da yazıyor, köpeklerin, ekiplerin tümünün uyumlu olması, bir arama e, yöneticisi, yani search manager olması e, ve e, K9 ekiplerinin de e, uyumlu bir şekilde çalışması e, önemli. Ancak önemli olanlardan bir tanesi de özellikle main training ve tracking yani koku takibi ve iş takibi köpekleri için e, kaybın gittiği yönü göstermesi açısından son derece önemli diyor. E, Serkan'cığım eğer eksiğin varsa lütfen e, sen de zaten yazıyorsun. Yani bizim de arama e, kurtarma operasyonlarında arama e, yöneticisi ve K9 ekiplerinin e, uyumlu olmasını sağlayacak bir düzene ihtiyacımız var diye. Okay, thank you. Keep going, Chris. So, uh, as I said, if you ask me, uh, main trailing is a great thing, or the trailing. As I said, my opinion is that the best is somewhere in the middle. For example, uh, in my opinion, a real operational dog should start training as a trekking dog, then switch to main trailing. Aha. Uh -huh. That's my opinion because what I saw on the um, operational, what I saw. Because if you're doing just main trailing, what you do is actually you have a air synth dog on the leash. Because you know that from the experience, after some time, they are not following the tunnel, they are searching in the air where the person is. So to avoid that, we can do this way you know tracking with the main trailing that's my opinion but you know yo for the professional uh, level so uh, we are doing to do but uh, we not start here uh, with tracking we start with the main training but uh, if the dog is going to be operational level we are going to be teach the dog put the nose a little down uh, and this uh, show us to do real way uh, uh, this is the thing if you're doing main trailing in my opinion you have to train double blind or blind or double blind always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time double blind. Yeah, you're, you're right. And okay. That's great. Thank you uh, for this good information. Then I'm going to be again the search management. Okay. Also, because I'm, I'm very impressed that I see your search management system in the Croatia. It's very small, uh, but really, really effective. Could you please explain a little what you do with the, this electronic stuff and the, the, the management system? Okay. This is the quite simple. We are using a GIS or the GIS system. Uh, we're using satellite system. That means we have a GPS and everything. What we do is uh, you collect the uh, statistical data from the world about missing persons. So what you do, you making a profile of the missing person, but not fits, uh, mental profile. You making a profile of the movement of that person. What does it mean? For example, uh, lots of police officers were involved in suicide cases. And yeah. if you ask them, they'll always say, okay, when we find the car where the person is, we know in surrounding the usually there is a suicide somewhere. Uh, so those kind of knowledge we collect, not we, in in world, there is a database. So they say, okay, if the person, uh, person's car is here in a circle around 800 meters, it should statistically, in 100% cases, they are there, shot or hanged or whatever. Uh, so those kind of statistics we use to prepare the search. That means... Okay, so uh, you mean uh, you have a good information and statistics about the lost person behavior and the suicide person behaviors. That's right. There is a book called The Lost Person Behavior. 
with yeah. the date and you can count you person is or not uh it's not just for the suicide you have lots of other things so why this is important when you have lots of resources and you have statistical data and you can presume where the person might be and yeah you have in that kind we call it um, um hot spots that means area where the, there is a probability that the person is they are high yeah. or lower okay But you don't want to waste a resource so what you do you find those area who are hot spots and send the resource best resource at that time uh, search management is good because the search manager knows what the resource can do for example what the main trailing can do what the search and rescue dog the area search dog area search dog yeah what the helicopter can do what the diver team can do and that means he'll not send the divers to do the helicopter work <laughs> <laughs> to the to the climbing <laughs> yes um and he co coordinates with them okay so for example one search manager with the two area search dogs and one main trailer will come to the area uh, deploy the main trailer with the gps write down where did they go in the meantime well while the main trailer is searching to find something I'm a search manager makes a map put the areas inside uh, breaks it down in little segments name the segments and say okay main trailer is doing what he's doing but you two with the area search dog depending on the site where the main trail dog went we're going to deploy you in this zone or this zone or this segment and we're going to search in that segment when okay you're doing this on time right yes that's right this all the management all electronic stuff yes you're doing this during the uh, uh the mission that's right okay so usually what we do while we are driving to the spot actually you receive the information and you have something called um uh, i i'm trying to find the english word um wheel search okay wheel search is you know when you look at the map of the roads and everything Yeah, It looks like a bike wheel like this because yeah. you have one spot and there is a lots of so ways. Yeah. So what you do, you first search these roads on around the roads because that gives you time to prepare rest of the segments and if the person usually the old persons are not far away from the roads and everything. But then you can say, okay, we check this the person is not in this area. Then we can move further. You know, mm -hmm. and all, all the time you sending the resource resource is coming back you give him a rest and you collect data see where he went with the gps you put the gps data in your computer then you see okay this area was not covered wide oh well there was a big for example a hole or the well there okay that means that i have to send the guys to uh, the alpinists or speleological guys to go down there to check it because you don't go there with a the dog you know so yeah yeah Sure. So okay. This is the old time. Yeah. That's that was a great information. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. So now I'm coming to cadaver uh, search. <laughs> so yeah, that <laughs> we, we, we like you know that you smell dead people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me tell you my thought just now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh I hate normal people. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh you tell the uh, at the beginning of the conversation about the cadavers uh, on the ground and underground. So, the it mean the cadaver it's the still the body form, not the separated or nothing. You know, Dep you mean depends. Okay. So, the what is difference between on the ground and underground you tell a little uh, give some uh, information about it but i want to hear from you uh, what is on the ground and underground quite simple first of all when you have a person on the ground you have a big amount of smell yeah that smell travels like the like the smell i mean first of all smell of the dead person and smell of the live person are not the same exactly okay the moment the person die we all have a specific smell that specific yeah. smell is uh, 
combination of the element, chemical elements in our body. Right. And the DNA of different uh, culture, food. It, yeah, it's individual. Drink. Yeah. yeah. But, but even the, uh, the, the, the, the twins have a different DNA, uh, d different smells. Okay. When you die, we all smell the same. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and it doesn't really matter, even though there is some scientific stuff, it doesn't really matter if you're from Asia, if you're from Europe, if you're from Africa, we all smell, smell the same because of the chemical uh, development in your body after you die. So you have on the ground body with a big amount of smell, which goes in the air and it was dispersed by the thermic situation. That means with the yeah. thing. Okay. And it's, it's a little similar like uh, area search. Uh, it is, it's actually area search uh, stuff. Yeah. Okay. As I said, it's like looking for the... But it's a dead, dead guy. Yeah, dead it's people. a dead guy. The same thing you can find by the less amount is, for example, if you have a big catastrophe like a plane going down. Yeah. So you have lots of body parts around and you have to collect them. It's the same thing. But this time you have a problem. This time you have body parts all over the place and the pieces of the plane with the body parts all okay. around. Something cover it. So it's not anymore on, uh, just on the ground. There's something around. The yeah. difference between the on the ground and underground is quite simple. On the ground, you have big amount. In the ground, you don't have a big amount. You have just a few molecular scent in the air or on the surface. So uh, let me explain that point uh, to people because the, the order of the dead people uh, the, the, uh, is uh, heavy than air. Right? That's right. And uh, icky and heavier than air. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why if this underground uh, and the smell going to be not easy to uh, outside. That's right. Okay. For example, um, if you have a body, dead body, okay, you have in the cadaver scent of the human, you have 450 chemical elements, I think, something like that. But only seven or eight of that elements go in the air. All of the rest goes down. Okay. So imagine if you put this in the ground um, under the, a meter of soil, you have to search for this scent and the meter of soil and everything goes down. Whoa. So Whoa. the area search dog is too fast to find something like this. The, because the, the good area search dog can change the behavior or start to be wondering something's here, but they will not alert, most of them. Exactly. That was our uh, experience that we see. Uh, we we'll leave it together. And I, in my uh, experience, you're right. Because the fast dogs, it's been like, like, uh, like if you're looking for a dot in the, like, the, like on the page, you know, you see very detail and the slow. But if you're looking for a big, uh, some picture just look like this absolutely yeah okay that's that's nice so you tell us about the cadaver on the ground and underground and uh, some disasters uh, airplane crash or earthquake or something happened and uh, this is not underground but not on the ground it's a, a little b between these two cases right okay so now, uh, when we are talking about cadaver dogs, you have to understand that within the cadaver dogs, you have a search and rescue dogs who are looking for the dead people on the ground. Then you have uh, forensic dogs. Yeah. Forensic dog is searching for the blood and the semen because of the rape cases and because of the blood somewhere. And you have a cadaver dogs, uh, which we use for the graves. Now, Search and rescue dog who is uh, searching for the, in the catastrophes, like in the earthquakes, which you have in Turkey, we have in Croatia as well, cannot be teach, taught to do, uh, it cannot be imprinted on blood. Okay. Why? It's quite simple. When you're looking for the person in the earthquake, dead person in the earthquake, you can imagine there's going to be blood all over the place. Right. And you need the dog to forget about the blood and search for the cadaver. For the I understand. I it's, understand. It, it's the same thing with the catastrophe. 
Okay. When you have an airplane down, you'll have blood all over the pieces of the airplane. Exactly. Or a terrorist attack after a terrorist attack or something. For like example, that. and you need the you need the body part. You don't need the drop of blood. For that kind of stuff, you have a forensic dogs. And those I see. dogs are used by police, and they are on the spot, on the criminal spot, on the spot where everything happened immediately after it happened. Mm -hmm. Then you have cadaver dogs, which are we are actually uh, specializing it for the cold cases. That okay. That means three, six, uh, three to six months and more. Okay, and we are searching for the grave. What we are actually searching is uh, actually contaminated soil. Soil. So the contaminated soil with the cadaver. That's right. Okay, and that's uh, really, I mean. Uh, searching for the cadaver is really, let me put it this way, working with the dogs for in searching of the cadaver is a teamwork, first of all, and it's 40% uh, work with the dog, 60% science. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. It's not a dog, dog business. It's not a dog business. It's a yeah. science. That's right. Because it's really tough on the dogs. It's really tough on the people. And you have to know a lot of things, yeah, from thermic, micro, uh, I don't know, uh, metro micro meteorology. The, the, you have to know a lot about the thermics. You have to know about the soil. You have to know about the ground, about the uh, chemical, the chemistry. Th lots and lots of things. And you have to be into it. And it's not just, you know, let's, let's have fun. Let's play. No, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a really tough things to do. And sometimes... Yeah. And sometimes when you're working on criminal cases and you know that the criminals are looking at you, you know. Sure, sure. Sometimes they, what you find actually, uh, can actually bring that person to the jail. <laughs> you know, so. Right, it, right. It's a tough. Right. Well, that's a, a very uh, important uh, information. Thank you much, brother. <laughs> so, so my last question. Yeah, uh, and then after that, I am taking the questions from the followers. So you talk about the forensic dogs. Yes. So uh, in my in our country, there is a no forensic dogs. I'm so sad about it. But we need exactly in uh, in the Middle East countries, they need the forensic dogs to find the semen and the blood. Yes. And it helps a lot the criminal police uh, to find the evidence because. The, now, the, in that century, the, the job of the police is to find the evidence to give the court, right? No, absolutely. And that's why I have big respect that you do. So I have uh, some uh, questions about the criminal cases for the forensic dogs. Okay. So you teach the dogs, forensic dogs, blood and semen, right? Yeah. So, and uh, uh, can the, a dog find the blood? after the for example the killer clean everywhere yes um yes it can um this is the thing depending on the surface and depending on the situation and amount of the blood and of course yeah. amount of the cleaning product that the perpetrator did it mm -hmm. found. we had a case i was working for the bkr bundes mm -hmm. um we had a case three years old case and uh we manage our dogs managed to find, uh, let's say, a few drops of blood okay. under the paint, under the uh, wallpapers. Uh -huh. uh, under the paint and the wallpapers. Yes, that's right. Uh, double, double cover. Yes, and we couldn't believe it. Um, but what happened, actually, we realized later, um, after this blood, he, he was not cleaning the blood. He painted the walls. So I, I guess that co color actually preserved this blood. Uh -huh. So anyway, uh, they even managed to extract the DNA from the blood. And they found the person. <laughs> wow. They take the DNA from the blood and they find the person. That's it. Yeah. That, that's, a not, that's a science. I, I, I don't yeah. love it. <laughs> I, I don't mean, love it. Uh, when I went back to talk to uh, inspectors after a few years, I didn't know about it. We, we were working there. We didn't know about it, but after a few days, after a few years, we came back and they said, oh, you know that case you're working in? Yeah, yeah, we find the guy. 
that's good that's good <laughs> yeah because uh, this is the thing uh, and you know that as a police ex-police officer uh when we are working we are not interested in the case uh for us the name the perpetrator how and everything doesn't really matter to us what yeah, i exactly. need what i need is information if it's planned to kill be killed uh is a female or male uh was it uh, in one piece is a body one piece or more pieces or yeah. did it cover or not you know so these are the important informations that's that's great so my last question yes uh, i i read right now in my notes yeah I, i know you're an it guy yes so now i think after this corona shit oh, sorry uh, corona situation so uh, the world will change so it's my opinion absolutely uh, and uh, the the artificial artificial intelligence working going to be growed right now and uh, i think after that situation going to be more what do you think about uh, that uh, machine learning and the art artificial intelligence I, i i i couldn't say but i you, you understand yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, is it possible to learn from the animals from the dogs from the animals to uh, help us or what do you think they are going to be more smart than the believer dogs but let me put it this way uh i yeah, technology please. it technology is great the problem with the it technology is that it's man made while the dogs are nature made okay exactly so the dogs are much more perfect than something made by man Because oh sorry <laughs> i need to do this you okay. you're totally right <laughs> okay so yes we can do some things and we do, did the great things we did the bad things but the nature did the right thing because the nature gave to the animal or the person something which is really important for the dogs you know that is a nose because yeah. dogs see the world around them by nose by smell by scent i'm very happy to uh, with the same uh, pic we are same picture on uh, i'm happy about it so now we can take some questions from the followers arkadaşlar uh, serkan buraya kadar vallahi serkan tebrik ederim yani müthiş bir hızla ve doğrulukla gidiyorsun alt taraftan <gülüyor> teşekkür ederim e, chris'in son söylediği soruyu ben bir tekrarlayayım chris gerçi e, şey e, serkan çevirdi ama dedim ki yapay zeka çalışmaları devam ediyor E, yapay zekaya insandan bir sürü bir şey öğretiliyor. E, hayvanlar ve köpeklerden öğretilmesi konusunda ne düşünüyorsun? Onun da söylediği şu, e, köpekler doğal ve doğa en iyisini yapıyor. Biz e, insan olarak bizden çok daha iyi öğretecekler ya da olacaklarına eminim. E, yapay zeka e, onların yanına gelemez diyor ve ben de katılıyorum. E, bu aşamada arkadaşlar sorusu olan varsa alabiliriz. E, bir taraftan Serkan da çeviriyor, bir taraftan ben de okurum alt tarafta. Uh, Any I, question? I can sing as well. <laughs> That's good. I think you you explain everything in very clear. Nobody want to ask something. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the thing, Oktan. You know that uh, this is really touchy thing, and from lots of lots of different per, uh, aspects. Um, you know, you know that I'm government consultant for the Croatian government for the Ministry of Veterinary Affairs, and we had a lots of talk about it. Um, on one side. Uh, you have a situation when you're looking for the missing person and dead body. That body is touchy because, first of all, you have to be respectful to it. And yeah. some people say, "Yo, I don't want the dog to find blah blah blah and everything." Well, I understand that point of view, but on the other hand, every person deserves to be buried with respect, and it doesn't really matter. a uh, religion a color of skin who what doesn't really matter but every person has to come back every person has to come back to the family and to bury it with respect even if we are talking about just one piece of the body so this is important to understand it's not that somebody is this dis- disrespecting somebody using the dogs in this kind of search it's that the reason why we are actually respect those people we are using the dogs because they can help us to bring them back home 
exactly well that's a very important point thank you very much for all you know, that information and uh, that was good to see you brother so uh, but i want to say something uh, as a as a joke yeah, so okay. i i know i'm a uh, single guy in the world that i love in your jokes <laughs> <laughs> and i i miss that and then i miss that <laughs> as my wife would say ah uh, you two you two you only you two can understand each other's jokes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You remember you're that? Right. You remember that with the harness, the pink harness? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, oh my! God. So I miss you so much, brother. Uh, hope to see you soon, and uh, thank you very much for all your information and everything. So thank you for your time, and uh, God bless you, or Allah bless you. What you want? <laughs> well, I hope to see you soon, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah, yeah, inshallah. Uh, Take care, brother. Take care. Bye-bye. Sevgili arkadaşlar, özellikle Türk izleyicilere söylüyorum. Sevgili dostum, Chris'i misafir ettim. Bize arama kurtarma köpekleri, arama yönetimi, kadavra köpekleri ve adli tıp hizmeti köpeklerinden bahsetti. Sağ olsun. Aslında konuşmasının başında da köpeklerin kendisini rehabilite ettiğini ve böyle bu işe girdiğini söylemişti. Yarın da e, köpekle rehabilitasyon konusunda psikolog bir kardeşimi misafir edeceğim burada. E, so the international followers thank you for joining us and uh, thank you very much for everything and uh, Chris gave us very good information about the search and rescue dogs and the search management, cadaver dogs and the forensic dogs and it's make me excited you know But what I like it, and the important point that he say is, we are doing not a dog business. This is a science, and we do is not a disrespecting. We doing this take the anybody dead or alive to take to home, and that was very important for me. And uh, good to see you all the guys here. Take care, so thank you very much. Herkese çok teşekkür ederim dinlediği için. Yayınlarımıza devam edeceğiz. İnşallah bilgi verebiliyoruzdur. Sizlerle duygularımızı, keyfimizi e, paylaşabiliyoruzdur. Buradan seyreden tüm arkadaşlarımıza çok çok selam. Bay bay.